Welcome to Weddings Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. Here's your host, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Weddings Unveiled professional tips and secrets on wedding planning and event design, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the hospitality industry. Before we get started, I want to ask you something. Are you looking for a community of professionals that are looking to share, learn, and grow where you can talk openly and freely about the highs and lows in your business? If so, I want to invite you to check out my inner circle at AngelaProfit.com slash membership. Hi, y'all. It's Angela Profit, and thank you so much for joining me today for another episode of Weddings Unveiled. And today I am talking with my friend, Matt Andrews, who has been a photographer for a while, as far as I can go back. And I've been in this industry for a while now. And I have gotten to work with Matt a ton, know him very well. He's been part of my family. He shot my brother's wedding. I should say captured my brother's wedding because we actually have done weddings before where they've actually captured people shooting and skeet shooting. So whenever we're talk, talking about shooting, I'm like, cameras or guns? So anyway, let me just clarify that. <laughs> but Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm great. I'm, I'm doing real good. Excited to finally be on the show. Awesome. Well, I definitely have some questions for you today that I think our listeners can really, really benefit from, especially if we have some newer planners, newer creatives, even new photographers, some of the things that you've started and some of the things, the trends and things that are just ever changing. But before we jump into that stuff, let's tell our audience, like, tell us about your background and how did you get into this whole creative thing because you didn't start in weddings which we'll get there in a minute but tell us how you got into the whole photography scene yeah I was I was always interested in photography and I really never thought this was the path I was going to take I was into music and you know played cello and wrote songs and did songwriter nights and I got my degree in sound production and music editing and worked in recording studios and and you know I was just really hard making any money at that and on the side Friends were constantly asking me to do their weddings just because I was always the guy with cameras at parties and stuff. And so they would ask me to do their weddings and, you know, I'd, I'd do one and there'd always be someone else there that was engaged and it would just kind of lead to another. And, and one of the biggest boosts I had in, in photography early on was that my dad was a college professor who was also into photography. And he had uh, pictures all over his office from all over the world and students would ask him to do their weddings and he would refer them to me, and let them know that I needed a summer job. And so I started doing a few more that way too. And this was 20 years ago. I started doing my first weddings while I was still in college when I was 21. Now I'm 41. So I've, I've yeah. shot hundreds, hundreds, like 500 weddings now. So it's kind of, again, there's like a theme here. We all kind of stumble into this because it's an accident. Like our friends, because we're creatives, we're good at it. And our friends ask us to do it. And then I don't know about you. I didn't know anything about business. And so it's really been a journey figuring oh, yeah. that out. I've learned everything the hard way because, I, you know, early on, I felt like, I mean, when I got started, it was back in the film days and, and there would be most successful photographers were kind of the hometown studio owners that, you know, put canvas portraits up at the mall and they were real, you know, they didn't want to share their secrets. You know, it was, you'd call them up and ask questions and they're like, who is this? And yeah. now it's just so easy. Uh, join groups and there's communities that are real helpful. And I think there's a quicker learning curve now. Yeah. And I definitely think that, you know, when you and I both started, which was, was around the same time, like social media didn't exist. And so word of mouth and doing what we say we're going to do really is how we got our jobs. And so like, did you used to shoot film and then you changed over to digital? I did. And, you know, I, I still think the film I was shooting early on was really beautiful. And it took a while for digital to really 
catch up. But uh, there was there was a year or two, and I call it my dark years, where I shot <laughs> digital a little too early, probably before it caught up. And those are the years I don't show those pictures very much. But uh, these days, I feel like I'm you know just getting beautiful photos with digital and just feel like not looking back because it's it's just a better profit margin yeah so if someone is from your perspective like if someone a planner or creative when they're looking for a photographer or choosing their photographer what are some like the top three things that you would recommend to someone to ask or look what are they looking for because I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, they don't know what they want. Yeah. So how do you help drive that? So one thing I really like to point out, I had a cousin that was getting married and I was already booked on her wedding day and it was kind of a bummer because I wanted to be able to help her, but I definitely wanted to help her find a good photographer and I gave her some tips. And one of the things that I said was real important is that I feel like there's so many photographers out there that show these beautiful natural light photos and natural light is beautiful. And when you've got it, it's great to take advantage of it. And you want a photographer that's not going to kind of over light things when it's not necessary. But at the same time, there's a ton of photographers that only show that kind of beautiful work. And it leaves you wondering, kind of like, are they able to get good stuff at receptions? Because half the wedding is the reception. And a lot of times it's darker and it's definitely more challenging. And so there's photographers out there that will show some of that work off and it definitely can make you feel a little more confident about it because that's when people are laughing and they're falling down on the dance floor and (laughs) and each other up and they're hugging and, you know, just there's so many people that they haven't seen in years and they're all together, family and friends. And it's just the reception I think is so important. And it's really those party pictures that made me kind of fall in love with wedding photography. And it's, I just think it's easier to get beautiful daylight photos and it really makes a difference like between kind of good photographers and great photographers is the ones who can get great reception photos too. So yeah, like looking at those websites, you want to really make sure they, they show that stuff off or at least ask them to show you. Yeah. I feel like there definitely, there's a theme where if I am looking into like, you know, I do a ton of destination weddings and travel. And when I'm looking, some people want to take people with them. Some want me to look into some local people. And when I'm looking at all, literally every one of their websites, it's like, you're a hundred percent spot on. They're all in the daylight. Yeah. And so I'm like, why? They're completely picturesque in places yeah. where you could have used an iPhone and gotten a gorgeous photo because right. it's a little easier that time of day when the sun, magic hour, that last two hours when the sun's low and the sky's orange. And I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And I don't know, yeah, just, so- uh, you want to just be sure that they're not, because some people, if they're not showing any of that, you don't know if they're just going to check out at the reception and you know, just get the cake cutting shot and then just kind of chat over in the corner and socialize and not really work. You want right. people that are really ready to get get that laughter and and the tears wiping away tears during the toasts and and ready yeah so you just said something so for those of you who are listening that don't know what magic hour is and the logistics that go into behind the scenes of couples saying should we see each other should we not see each other and you know so the sunset the ceremony time the reception time like every this all plays into this so if you don't know what that is matt tell them what magic hour is (laughs) yeah really it's really the last two to three hours before sunset when the sun is low and it makes those long shadows on the ground and you know, if you get it behind your subject, if the sun behind your subject, it'll backlight their hair and give it that kind of golden rim light around it. It sets your subjects apart from the background. And it's just really beautiful. Robert Redford shoots all of his movies only during magic hour. And so they say his movies take a lot longer to shoot because he's got less time throughout the day to actually do photos. But when you picture Robert Redford, you know, throwing the baseball in the natural or bagger vance on the golf course. It's always that pretty time of day with that magic hour light. And it is great for photos. It's just, it's romantic looking. It's beautiful. A lot of people call it golden hour. Some people call it magic hour. And if it's an overcast day, you might not get that golden color, but it's still, you get a little more contrast in the sky. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people, you know, Google like sunset calendars to figure out what time sunset's going to be. But on an overcast day, it might be like 30 minutes earlier, 45 minutes earlier. It gets dark a little earlier. But gotcha. so it's nice to build a little padding time in there too. Yeah. So changing subjects a little bit, like share with us from your perspective, how has marketing changed like with the social media world and 
we know it's not the same. And like, I literally heard a guy at a wedding say, like he was a guest, I'm just going to start shooting weddings with my, like with my iPhone. And I'm like, oh my God, it is not that easy, dude. So how, how is the whole marketing changed? It definitely has. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's, it's still so important. Uh, word of mouth is so important. It still drives my business for the most part. But yeah, there's there, more and more I'm seeing, you know, the brides are still in their 20s and they're, they're millennials that are, they're, they're following people on Instagram and they're finding photographers that way. And maybe not necessarily getting on Google and looking at photographers' websites anymore and looking at their work because they're thinking, oh, I've been following this guy forever. And he's great. I'm going to see if he's available. And then there's planners who they're, they're going to want to refer a photographer who's got a really big following because they know that he'll post some photos that they, from weddings they planned and tag them and they might get more followers out of it. And so I think Instagram is just super important. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of, kind, of, kind of late to the game with it. And I'm probably one of the busier photographers in Nashville. And I just want to make sure yeah. I, I stay busy. So I'm trying to put in a little more effort and start posting on Instagram a little bit, a little bit more. I'm still not doing it daily, but, you know, maybe three times a week. I will say a couple things about that that I have learned because, you know, I'm like a tech nerd. Yeah. And so I actually I was working with this destination photographer and he was saying how, you know, he travels a ton and he shoots a ton. So he outsourced a certain portion of that. And then he was like explaining to me about how he was like paying for followers and paying for placement and paying for this and paying for that. And then explaining about hashtags and da 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 da. And it, I mean, it is almost, it is a freaking full-time job I feel like. And, yeah. but I will say, you know, if you can get a social media strategist and build that into your budget or your packages or whatever, that's great. Most of small business owners, they're like, I can't afford that. I'm just trying to make a living. So it, like doing what I love, like truly. So I will say two things that I have learned it well three things one consistency so like you said you know maybe two maybe maybe three yeah. <laughs> you know it's like you really you really have to be consistent with your audience and so I would say three times at least and also to make sure your your um Instagram account there's pros and cons to it being personal or business but on the business side and with the, which the algorithm is different but you get analytics and insights. And so you can actually click on that and figure out like when is the best time to be posting and when is the most engagement. And the other thing I will say is in our industry, like people can pay for followers and pay for traffic. Organic is definitely going to be the best and the most real. So I really don't kind of believe in paying for that. Um, like I want people to be engaged. And so another way you can kind of tell with that is when people are paying for placement is how many comments are there? Like how many people are actually engaging? Right. And I will you tell you 60,000 followers and then, you know, maybe and no comments, five likes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can really tell, and I'll, I'll tell you, like, this is kind of a newer concept that I have noticed at some of these conferences I've been going to lately is like they say put your tribe together meaning you know if you have you can like favorite people on instagram and pinterest and so if they post pictures or whatnot um you know to like and share and comment and it's actually hilarious because a few weeks ago someone actually brought it to my attention and they're like and you do great with social media like you always tag everybody but like no one comments and like no one shares and no one likes and like I'm like, that's because people around me, they suck at social media <laughs> when I actually outsource and have someone help me. And I have someone who copyrights and who takes my voice and actually makes a full sentence out of it because I'm really bad at that and making sure that like the vendors are tagged. And so I've actually had to reach out to people and say, Hey, like if we, tag you or you know whatever like please share it like please like it please comment like this is free yeah. advertising for you so you know let's pull together a tribe and help organic traffic I'm actually putting together like a little mini book not a, a nerdy book and a video about like hey it's like let's help each other you know yeah. like why why are we not doing that Absolutely. so there's definitely different approaches um, now you said something a few minutes ago about you, you're one of the busier photographers, which I know you are. And so like, how would you recommend 
to people who are staying busy, a little bit crazy busy, how to be a little bit more choosy and how to not get overwhelmed. Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like being busy helps you stay busy. You know, there's, there's definitely a momentum thing. And, and I think I mentioned earlier, it's, it's just like every other wedding I shoot, there's a bridesmaid that's engaged and, you know, you, you make friends with planners and vendors and so they lead to more weddings and you really have to, you know, as demand increases, kind of raise your prices. And uh, I really feel like so much of pricing has to do with demand. And, you know, I think prices will definitely um, kind of keep you at the, you know, the right pace. But I, I feel like I want to be busy because I'd rather be shooting more. Uh, it makes me better at my craft and it helps me network and it helps me meet all those engaged people at the weddings that I'm already at shooting. And I'd rather network that way than, I guess, to pay for advertising and, and market in a lot of other ways. I think being busy is, I don't think it's a bad thing. And I think my perspective is different from a lot of people just because I used to work a real job where I was, you know, I was for probably 50 hours a week in an office, just uh, having to put a tie in every day and commute in the car. And I'm just so appreciative now that, you know, I'm, I might work on my Saturday, but then the rest of the week I can be in my pajamas, with my dog on my lap, listening to an audiobook while I'm editing at my own yeah. pace and then be at home when my daughter gets home from school and, you know, go to the park or ride bikes. And it's just, there's, I feel like there's so much more free time. And so, you know, I think a lot of photographers just gasp when they hear that I shoot 40 to 50 weddings a year. In 2016, I shot 56 weddings that year. So I averaged more than one a week. And, you know, I actually had a lot of two wedding weekends and I actually had about 12 weeks off that year with, with no weddings. And those are weeks where you could just get out of town. And it's like when I was working at Vanderbilt, I had, you know, two weeks paid vacation every year. And it was just, it was, you know, so much less flexible. And uh, I just think that, that really changes your perspective a little bit when you've seen how bad some jobs can be and how hard it is and, and uh, working for yourself, being a freelancer, it's really great. And there's commercial photographers that, you know, they, they don't even know how they're going to make their mortgage the next month. But with weddings, I know exactly how many weddings I have next March and April already. Yeah. And uh, it's great because you can kind of plan out and save. So there's, I think it's uh, being busy is not bad. It's very doable. I, I guess uh, I probably digress from your question a little bit, but, <laughs> but I guess no, how, no, how, how not to burn out and how to, how to, and I, I do think that, uh, you know, you have to just be, learn to be really efficient with your editing. Uh, there's, there's software. Photo Mechanic is this really amazing culling software. And when it came out, it changed my life. Um, because it's just so speedy on your computer and you can't get distracted by editing. You know, you might come across a picture, you know, five years ago before I was using photo mechanic and I'd be like, Oh my God, this picture is so beautiful. And I just would get distracted by it and start playing with it. But really I needed to be uh, focused on what, what the job was at hand, which was culling and deciding what I'm keeping. And I come home with thousands. I, I do full day weddings every time I shoot a wedding. And so I would come home with, you know, maybe 3,000 photos that I'd taken and my second shooter might give me another 2,000 and I'd have 5,000 pictures to go through and I don't want to overwhelm my clients. And so I'd want to cool it down to maybe the best thousand. You know, a lot of those pictures are near duplicates that I take just in case somebody blinks. And so you just kind of have to go through and, and decide yes, no, yes, no, and, and decide what you're keeping. And Photo Mechanic is this really amazing software that I can go through 5,000 photos and decide the 1500 that are the best shots and and maybe an hour and a half or two. Yeah. So also too, I guess another thing to let our listeners know that like you don't do it all alone. Like you do trust other people to help you edit pictures, right? Well, yeah, I've outsourced a little bit here and there. I have to admit, I haven't had the best luck with it. There's a few sites uh, when I've gotten real busy, I, I mean, it's it's super important to uh, you know turn turn around your deliverables when you say you're going to. Um, and I always put in say my say that contract. again, say that again. Because oh, it's it's so important advice. to not go over your deadline. <laughs> and I give pissed. myself a deadline, and you know, I, for uh, still photos, I've put 45 days in there, but I really try hard to get people their photos in a month. And that's that's tough to do because. Um, I don't know if many brides realize how much time goes in the post-production, but every wedding I shoot, I might spend 10 hours there on the wedding day, but I actually spend about four times that amount of time on my computer, culling, editing through the thousands of photos, getting rid of zits and fixing the color that came in through the window on the streetlight or whatever, you know, just 
just uh, I, I recently had a bride who had fallen on her bachelorette party and had this horrible bruise on her left oh. arm. And every picture, her left arm was facing me. I had to get rid of this bruise. And it's like really time consuming. And, and uh, you know, I don't want anyone to ever ask me, hey, would you go back and fix this picture? I want it to be right when I upload it to the gallery so that I don't have to do that. And yeah, so, seriously. You know, it's great. So if anyone wants to just order a print, they're not going to yeah. get it and want their money back. So. Yeah. So yeah, I spend a lot of time on that. And then, then there's the sorting them and, and then uploading them. And yeah, it's, it's a real, it's a real project on the back end. And, and if you start doing two weddings in a weekend, you know, that's, that's really more hours than you can put into it in the week. So you start to get backed up a little bit, but uh, yeah. yeah, it definitely, it definitely helps to cool fast and you just have to, to set time aside and have, I have designated days that are only for editing where I just, you know, stay home and edit which is called time blocking, which I love. That's the only way I get stuff done. So like from your perspective, I think it's a little bit different. Like despite the constant struggle, you know, it's the best job in the world. It's the best job ever. Like yeah. I know you touched on that a little bit it to really where you're is. just, you'll, you're there thankful. There can't be another job where you get more just praise and thank you, you know, people stroking your ego, like you're the best photographer or, or just, you know, this photo is so beautiful. I love these photos. You just, because you can, even, they tag you when, when they're on Facebook and then you can just read the comments where all their friends are reading them. And I guess it's gotta be one of every photographer's favorite things to do. <laughs> it's just read all the compliments. It makes you happy. That's awesome. What do you see? Like, what is some of the scary stuff? Like the, I'm not a trendy girl and I, so I don't, really attract trendy people. And so, but like, what are some of the scary trends that you see in the industry, like coming up? Okay. So, well, from a, from a, you know, a perspective of marketing and booking, um, it's, I'm not sure how much it's really changing things, but uh, you know, I, I see these, these uh, like everything wedding.com like group or everything wedding groups on Facebook where all these brides will get together and, it used to be where a bride would kind of reach out to a bunch of artists, basically photographers that she thought were, were great and ask them what they charge. And now these, these sites will, the bride, the brides will post their budget and, and uh, basically say, would anybody be willing, wouldn't be willing to do it? And you might have, you know, 30 people respond and they're just new photographers that don't have any experience and, you know, they might not have backup equipment or insurance, may not, may not pay their taxes, and they, they are willing to do it for this cheap price just to get the experience. And, and I know that there's going to be a lot of disappointed brides out there, but I'm not sure those are necessarily the same brides that, you know, I'm going for, that, you know, their, if their budgets are so much lower. And I do think everybody has to start somewhere. But, uh, but boy, I... I, I do when you see those sites and, and the amount of responses people give, you're you're realizing that actually some of the, I guess some of the power that you have in giving in naming the price is is now in the customer's hands. Just kind of the way Amazon's affected retail, and it's just uh, I guess the way the internet is making it easier to find people in your budget. Basically, find the lowest bidder. Everybody can find the lowest bidder now, and and decide who their photographer is going to be on a pricing level. Whereas photographers, we want people to find us based on our, the quality of our work and, uh, you know, our personality. And there's all these other things you want to you know, show people so that they'll, they'll, uh, they'll see why you're worth paying. Because, I mean, gosh, you, if you uh, get just anybody at a wedding, I hear nightmare stories all the time. Yep. You know, you know a photographer that just, you know, wouldn't direct anybody or, you know, was kind of afraid to, to speak and it was just kind of chaos and people really, or, or take incredibly long time for the family pictures, fixing little flyaway hairs on somebody while 20 people are waiting and just ready to go to the party. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to it, not just photography, but sort of kind of directing groups and, and being able to be clear, giving directions and, and making it fun. I mean, it's a party and, and you've got to be, you've got to be positive. And so, um, you know, you're, you know, that's part of the reason, you know, it's so, it's really nice and important to have the advice of a planner and people who've been there instead of just going for that lowest bidder. Yeah. <laughs> you can always find somebody cheap, but you're going to get what you pay for. Well, I feel like, you know, that saying price is what you pay value is what you get. And 
I actually hate those sites because it is devaluing what we do as an art. And I see, just like I see design as an art, like an architect putting together the logistics of the planning, which is two different things. It's like, for t- same thing with photography. So I don't understand. But, and again, we all have our client avatar, which for Matt and I, like, we're not ever going to be on those sites. Like, that's not our client. Again, people, that it's a choice, but it's also like a choice. Are you going to go eat at McDonald's for dinner or are you going to go eat at Morton's Steakhouse or Came Prime? You know, you get what you pay for, so you get value. Yeah, so, it's pretty easy to convince people when they realize this is the one day, you know, this is yeah. it. This is all your family coming together. I can remember every wedding I was at as a child playing under tables with my cousins and, you know. <laughs> Just, I remember it all. And it's, it's, you're making family memories. And so, and, and these pictures are important. So. so I attract a lot of orange clients and true colors and um, with your personality, like it's, it's a lot of times, you know, it's like we recommend people based on clients. I don't look at their budget first or what they want to spend. I'm like, what's the personality. And so like when I think what's special and unique about what you do, like I'll never forget like the fun photo booths and the backdrops, but um, probably one of the funnest weddings we ever had was, I don't know about you, but it was for me, but we were out in the middle of literally nowhere, like in the boondocks in Kentucky. <laughs> and that's when the guys, okay. that's the one I thought you were talking about. Yep. And like all of a sudden, this is, I think before like the whole president election was happening between like Trump and Hillary Clinton. And I look up and then there's like this guy in a bear suit. And then there's like, this Clinton mask and this Hillary mask. And I'm like, what is happening? (laughs) And these people were dancing. They had an awesome DJ and their fun lighting going. They were just such a fun group who loved to drink, obviously. And I'm like, what is happening? And it was just, it was normally I, I work in the back, like in the closet. Like I don't come out of the closet it because I'm like working on next week's event but my girls radioed me they're like you have to come out here and see this <laughs> and but that was not planned that was not on the timeline it's nothing that they asked for it's like you just saw an opportunity I and you just like ran with it right <laughs> yeah they were just a you know it was like kind of a crazy group a uh, crazy party and you know when they were really having fun with the props on the photo booth. So I just kind of told them they, they could feel free to wear it on the dance floor. And uh, I encouraged it a little bit because I know that when people have a mask on, they, they get a little crazy on the dance floor knowing nobody knows who it is. It makes them feel a little bit less in, inhibited, I guess. And uh, it was, it was pretty crazy. There was definitely a, a Trump Hillary dance off in the middle of that wedding. It was hilarious. <laughs> I, yeah. I pride myself on my photo booth props. I don't just bring like paper, paper mustaches, but I, I go to the costume store and, and totally. I will, I will go on a spinning spree that I, I can't even tell my wife about because it's so much fun getting costumes for people to play dress up in. <laughs> Grownups like to, you give them a couple beers and they're going to put, they're going to mix and master all these crazy costumes and have fun with it. It's like you love, like, I don't know, but I'll, another one too was um, the one that had that cool wall at, it was actually one of the new hotels. It was like an Indian, half Indian wedding. And I don't know, just like the people do the funniest things with like funny props. So when people are like, I want a photo booth, I'm like, well, what kind? Like there's so many different things out there that can make it really fun or really stale. Um also, like another thing that I want to I really to ask love those slow motion video booths that videographers. Oh my God, they are fun. They're so much fun. Yeah. They and are. I can get real, you know, I'd love to just brainstorm some things that would be fun to do on those, you know, to see people. They're so funny. Popping streamers and it's great. So as we wrap up, like I know that you are working on a big project and so like tell our listeners like why not go all in with weddings or commercial and like why you although you do shoot all those weddings you don't close yourself off to the creative world. So tell them like some other projects like that you enjoy that you're into and like it's okay to not just shoot one thing. Yeah, I mean there's there's definitely different schools of thought um a lot of people have really really you know profess that it's better to to fo- focus and kind of specialize in just weddings or just baby portraits but 
I've always just kind of gone after everything. And I really feel like at weddings, you're going to take a good photographer is going to take the opportunity to get baby pictures of that baby somebody's holding. And they're going to, you know, get the kids running around the flower girls. You're going to have children pictures, family portraits. I mean, I'm constantly pulling families aside. I'm like, they're all dressed up. They're together. You know, the kid's hair isn't messed up yet with cake in it. So let's go ahead and get a photo. And, and, you know, they'll use them as their Christmas cards and these are just random guests, you know? And, so um, I'm always pulling people together and, and I feel like at the wedding, there's just opportunities to take so many different types of pictures that, you know, I feel like you get more practice. It really is a craft. And, and so I take on all sorts of stuff. I just did maternity portraits last week for a former client and we went to the Wilson County Fair and got pictures of them, you know, with cotton candy, you know, like she was holding the pink cotton candy and the blue cotton candy, kind of like, what's it going to be? And uh, yeah. had her in front of the balloons and had her in front of the Ferris wheel and those real shiny slides. And it was such a fun shoot. And I just feel like it, while I was doing that maternity portrait shoot, I'm like, I'm coming back here to the fair to do, you know, my next fashion shoot. This was so much fun. And there's, you know, I did, you know, I did fashion shoots last year for Grandel Opry. Yesterday, I just did a, uh, a, a big promo shoot for HGTV's Flipper Flop Nashville. And, and um, you know, it's just, I feel like they all present unique challenges and a wedding photographer has got to be, you know, ready for challenges. There's always going to be, you know, like shortened timelines. I had a wedding last weekend where the bride was running an hour and a half late getting her sari on at an Indian wedding. And it completely swallowed up all of the time we designated for pictures. And so we had to do all the hour and a half worth of pictures that we'd planned before the ceremony and a half hour after the ceremony. And I think we wow. killed it. We did really great. You know, it wasn't ideal because they were definitely a little more rushed afterwards, but you know, the pictures are going to be great. We got everything we needed, but, but you've got to be fast. You got to be, yeah. and I feel like, when, you know, you know, shooting for a television show in between video takes, you, you have to learn to be fast and you have to be, ready if the cloud comes over the sun for the lighting to completely change so yeah the more you do that isn't isn't just the one thing i think it really stretches you and makes you everything i do that's not weddings makes me a better wedding photographer and and you know even you know you just learn from everything you do even my job back at vanderbilt it, it made me better at organizing my email and my calendar and you know getting back to people so yeah just business skills i guess well, tell our listeners where they can find you online and where can they find out more about you? Yeah. Uh, so uh, NashvilleWeddingPhotography.com. Pretty easy. I'm at Nashville Wedding Photography, NashvilleWeddingPhotographer.com. I looked out and got those domains because I've been doing it for 20 years. But, he's a uh, smart guy. Yeah. But it's Matt, <laughs> Matt Andrews Photography. And so you can awesome. Google my name. I'll pop up and follow my Instagram and I'll, I'll love to meet you and I'm always up for chatting about the wedding industry. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for joining us. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Angela. You too. Bye, everyone. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I am so very grateful if you will leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Weddings Unveiled. Also, be sure that you're a part of my email list, and if not, you can sign up at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the wedding and event industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Weddings Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Weddings Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time for more insights to help you build a productive, profitable wedding or event business. For more great resources, head over to AngelaProfit.com.